Hi, Sylvia. You lost me already. No, I can never lose you. Let's welcome our guests. Well, thank you everyone for coming here. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Silvia Barron. I'm the program officer for Alliance Healthcare Foundation. Uh, and this is a, the first uh, of the four seminars that we have where we bring all of our grantees together from Imperial County and, and uh, San Diego. I want to particularly thank our uh, Imperial County grantees for taking the time to be here so early. It's about a, a minimum of two hours drive with no traffic and you know you don't have traffic in Imperial County so when you come to San Diego on the I-8 and I-4 whichever freeway you're taking it's, it's shocking to see you know the kind of traffic that they encounter so thank you thank you very much. Uh, I would like uh, I don't know if we're going to have an opportunity to have everyone introduce yourselves because we have a lot of people and we want to make sure that we use this morning as productive as we can but uh, you know we have a break I would really like to have you know uh, you guys interact with each other or, or we'll do a quick uh, round robin of introductions so that you know you can see the faces and you know who's from Imperial, who's from San Diego and a little bit of what you're doing but I don't know if that's in the plan you want to sure. tell me if we, can we do that we sure we can. right now or in the break or yeah, we'll take a we can start we'll do it during a break okay we'll do it in a break well welcome again everyone again the restrooms are up the stairs the food is over here and he's the expert. Anything you need, just ask Kevin. Thanks again. Thank you, Sylvia. All right. Round of applause for Sylvia, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the show. How's everybody doing today? Good. All right. Uh, I've just had my first coffee, so I will forewarn you when that coffee hits my blood system, things are going to go really fast. So uh, please, that in addition with me being from the East Coast, and we speak fast already. So uh, please, if I'm going a little too fast, just you know, give me the international case. Slow down a little bit, something. Okay. And uh, has everybody uh, gotten onto the internet? Anybody not connected to what they need to be connected to yet? What do we need to be connected to? Right now, the internet. You're connected. Right. So like, so yeah, to stuff. Right. Because we're going to do work today. Um, I, I, I emphasize the work, uh, the work workshop, because uh, I intended us to work together today. Um, if you want to lecture, there's a bunch of videos that you can go watch. In the convenience of your own offices, you don't have to drive all the way down here uh, to watch a video. Uh, uh, so I want to make sure uh, that, uh, that we uh, know that we're working together today, too. So where you have questions, please ask. Right? My job is to get you farther along than you were before you came here today. Um, our agenda is uh, very filled, uh, but I'd like to do some things, take a break, uh, do some more things, take another break. This will allow uh, the leaders uh, that are uh, needed back home to answer some emails, make some quick phone calls, tell them that you'll be there right after lunch. Uh, and also, if you're trying to catch up a little bit, it'll give you some time to catch up and get things figured out. I don't want to leave anybody behind. I want to make sure that we all complete our program together together okay uh, so uh, I want to talk about quickly um, what we're here to talk about which is um, social media right and I want to just give you a little bit of a, a background a quick background about me to understand my perspective on social media because um, I spend a lot of time with social media I spend sometimes too much time with social media right so uh, look at the screen here Right, so this is me in the very center of the graph. Wait, I've got a laser pointer. I believe they actually gave me a laser. My mom doesn't let me use scissors with pointy ends. Uh, so I'm in the center here, right? This is my world. I'm connected to these people on a one-to-one uh, -one basis, and then I affect all these other people on the outside. But in one way or another, I interact with these people every day, right? So there's a lot of opportunities with people, as uh, as you were very aware. Now, when we take that on its side, right? If I am there, I have all these different degrees of connections, and I can influence these people by the proximity that I have to them. So the parallels that I see is you using social media can affect many more people than you think that you may be able to affect, and I and I think uh, than you currently do. And I think social media is a tool that will allow you to extend past those people that you work with and the people that directly serve, the people in the community, to people that they know, to all the way down to people that you serve 
in your respective communities, right? So um, these levels of influence are used for different reasons. A lot of times, uh, people will use them to build what we call social capital. Anybody ever heard of sort of social capital across the United States, right? Uh, anybody have a favorite definition or want to try and, and uh, uh, give us a, a quick, what's the synopsis of social capital? Please proceed. So um, social capital is really about the relationship that we build in communities. So for example, if you're building a house, the physical capital would be the materials that you use, the human capital would be the skill sets, the electricians, the plumber, and the social capital would be the ability to work together to build that house. Very much. Right. So um, one of the definitions that uh, I liked, I believe it was uh, uh, Nan Lim uh, had said, uh, uh, time and expecting result out of this, right? This is a short paraphrase uh, of this. Uh, I liken it to the um, uh, kind of the, uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear somebody say, uh, you know, my network, whether it's your employee network or somebody owes me a favor or I know a guy who knows a guy. Those are all different examples of social capital. Like you have a relationship with somebody and there is some intangible equity in that relationship. And you can task that capital at different times when you need an introduction to somebody that you don't know when you need somebody to do a favor, or sit on a board, or attend an event, or all these different things. So I use social capital, I, I use social media to increase my social capital. So at those different people at different times, I can help facilitate things that I need to do. So that's the purpose, as I see it, for social media. Now, when we start defining social media, right, um, I find that it, it's, uh, it's very interesting to hear um, what people think social media is, right? Ask somebody, what's social media? And they'll say, it's Facebook, right? Well, that's, that's a social media site. Um, the definition that I like, and, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to be expeditious in our, our joint learning today, is people using technology to communicate, right? So um, I started my education, uh, my undergrad is in communications and psychology. So I learned uh, theories of mass communications and why people do the things that they do. And then my master's is in multimedia technology. I, use, I learned to, to use more technology, multimedia, audio, video, all those types of things. My doctoral studies were in instructional technology. I learned even more about technology, how to do online learning, how to, how to make things so people would learn, right? And with the more that I learned about technology, the more that I learned that it's still about communications, right? So as, uh, as you, some, some people sit here and they're like, well, I, I don't know how to use Facebook. I don't know how to use Twitter. I don't know how to use LinkedIn. That's okay. That's just technology. All that is is a little bit of technology between what you already know how to do, which is communicate with people. So if you think of it less about, geez, I have to learn how to use technology, it's no. It's just like, I need to learn how to technology to do what I already need to do. Right? So that whether you call it a tweet, whether you call it a post, whether you call it a status update, whether it's a hashtag or, an ad or anything else, it's still two people with a little bit of communication, a little bit of technology inside that you're trying to figure out how to communicate with, right? So I, I don't want this to, uh, uh, I don't want it to be intimidating for those who may have been intimidated in the past. I want to demystify it. As somebody who knows about all this stuff, um, there's a lot of hype. Um, there's a lot of speed because things change so quickly. Uh, and sometimes, you know, just when you think you get it figured out, you know, uh, my, your 11-year-old comes up to you and shows you something that you've never seen before. Uh, you know, my daughter, I have an 11-year-old on Instagram, and she just showed me this, and she just made a video using this, and she did this, all this stuff. It's stuff I didn't even learn how to do yet. Uh, but it, it does change that fast. But if you step back from it a little bit, and you just realize that it's still just people, uh, and you, uh, most of you are, are very much in the people business. You know about people, you know your people. So you just have to figure out how do you use this little technology and keep doing what you already know how to do. Does that make sense? Are you a little less scared now? <laughs> All right. So I do want to, to look at the expanse of social media, though, because um, social media just is not just social networks, right? Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, these are all social networks, right? Networks of people that came together for different reasons. Um, some of the other social media networks that you may or may not be familiar with are things like Orkut, Tencent, High Five. Anybody hear of those last three? Right? And uh, any idea why I put those last three up there? Any guesses from the audience? They're big in other countries, maybe? Because they're big in other countries. 
many of you deal with people from other countries, the people that are there and they want to come here, right? One of the things I was doing as I was preparing for today uh, was just take a look at the social networks that our grantees are using, right, that, that you currently use. Does, uh, does anybody uh, uh, deal with any of the other social networks currently for their organization? Who are you working with? A little bit with High Five. Yeah. Big in Latin America. Uh-huh. And uh, it, uh, do you get a lot of activity on that channel? A bit. I don't think we use it as much as we could. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So, so my first suggestion slash rhetorical question is why not? Those of you who deal uh, with, uh, with, with people from other countries, I would encourage you to take a look at these because the obvious ones are Facebook, especially if you're dealing with people and it's referrals and friends of friends. That's a gimme. LinkedIn, you're there for, uh, for business reasons. Right? Your organization has to do business with other organizations. When you're on LinkedIn, it makes you look like a business, right? so you perceive differently. But uh, the other social networks, I think um, I would investigate does that make a bigger difference in those communities you serve in trying to reach the people outside of the country that are, want to come inside the country to give them a little more of a, a connection, right? There's a big step on saying, yep, I'm going, right? So if you can communicate earlier and have those channels open, perhaps it may make a difference for you. Now, besides so social networks, there's photo sharing. Pinterest, Instagram, Shutterfly, iStock, Flickr, uh, anybody else use anything else for photo sharing? Over. I'm sorry? Overgram. Oh, I'm sorry? Overgram. Overgram? Uh, I don't know Overgram. Right. So uh, Instagram's gotten a, a lot of uh, attention. Um, they just added video. Um, but uh, I don't think, uh, and let me just go, let me rephrase this. Um, Instagram isn't going to be for everybody. Any, you know, what's the, any, any general differences? Anybody knows the difference between Pinterest and Instagram? Let's think of it in demographics. Who uses Pinterest? Women, predominantly women, right? If you are trying to reach women, right, there are a lot of women already on Pinterest, right? And who uses Instagram? Younger kids. If you're trying to reach teenagers, younger kids, they're on Instagram. Right, the selection of the social media is very critical because you want to put a message where your audience isn't. Right, there's the I can uh, I can put it somewhere and I can make everybody go there, or I can go to where everybody's talking about what I want them to talk about already, and I can join that conversation. The latter is a little less work. Right, so as you look at all these different types of social media sites and options, there's a reason why you pick one over the other. Just give some thought. Don't just say, oh, well, everybody's on here. Well, not everybody's on there. Not it, there's not anybody that's on everywhere. Video sharing. YouTube, Vimeo, Mad Cafe, Vine, uh, TubeMobile. Anybody here at TubeMobile? Right, do you use it? Yeah. So um, so everybody knows YouTube, yeah? All right. Uh, anybody here at Vimeo? Right? They're very nice too. They have a, 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 a nicer player. You know on YouTube, you get all those ads when you put on on there? No ads on Vimeo, so it looks nicer. Uh, but there's, there are hundreds of video sharing sites and not everybody watches video on YouTube, right? Sometimes uh, you, you're gonna, you'll have a video site that is specific to a type of content, right? So much like you would go out and look for the right social network, go look for the right video sharing network. Right, um, and then two, you get things like Tube Mobile and Blip TV. They actually, you know, how like uh, if, if you're going to upload one video to YouTube, right? You upload the video, you put a title, put a description, you put some keywords. In. That's what you do on an upload, right? And then you say, oh, well, I'm going to upload it to Vimeo too, and that's another one. And you say, oh, I'm going to upload it to Facebook since I have it, right? So now you upload it three times. Well, you upload it to Blip or Tube Mobile. You upload it one place, and if you you click on the buttons where you want it sent, it sends. So now instead of just having one video, the chance that, geez, I hope somebody on YouTube sees my one video. Now, you know, you can set it up where we had it set up for one client when it went to 35 different sites and services, right? You put some, a link in their copy description, now you have 35 links all coming back to your website, right? So there's a lot of opportunities for video. How many people are using video right now? 
Um, reason for those of you who are not, uh, what are the reasons? Uh, why aren't you? I'm curious. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Time commitment. Time. Yeah, it does take some time. It's not applicable to my organization. We get policies. It's not a video like an official voting. You could just do like a live feed from the floor. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. Just do that. Live. I think it's not funding us. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, there's time commitment, and, and there's a, there's cost associated with that, uh, and then there's appropriateness, right? Appro so yeah. it's the right tool for the right job. You would need photo releases of clients in order to do video. Yeah, but that's not so bad. There's actually an app for that. I know, and I can't remember what it's called. It's like Easy Release. Like that, that's one of the things. Yeah, we just saw it at a, uh, a conference, right? So PowerPoint sharing. How many people have PowerPoints that they use once and nobody ever sees again? Okay, I right, come on, raise your hands up there, right? We're all amongst friends here, right? So these are the things we want to learn from everybody, right? So we have PowerPoint, and Nancy and Sylvia use, use PowerPoint, uh, and we use we use SlideShare, right? So SlideShare, you take those PowerPoints that you that you know the eight people saw once that you worked three weeks on for eight people to see once, right? Now you put it somewhere, you put keywords, and other people will see that as long as it's uh, shareable material, right? And sometimes it can be sanitized, right? You take out the names to protect the innocent change the numbers, whatever. But uh, it, it, uh, when you have content like that, PowerPoint is a very, it's a very good tool. And if you're gonna put, make that investment in developing something like that, get your return out of that investment by using it. Most of these things have uh, embed code that you can put in on a page. So you upload it to SlideShare, you take a little piece of code and you put it on your website and then your PowerPoint shows up on your website. It takes you about, if you know what you're doing, it takes about 30 seconds to do it. But it's another way that you repurpose all of your content, right? Uh, video streaming. We are streaming live to uh, any of our, in the audience at home. Hello, hello, hello. Close to tweets. Um, we do have a, uh, a live audience today. Um, we're going to check in with our live audience and see if they have any questions during the break. Um, but Ustream is what we're using today. Live stream is another FaceTime. How many people FaceTime or kids on Facebook, right, on their iPhone? I know. You know, it's getting much more common. You know, remember like the. Okay, so I'm going to date myself here a little bit. Remember the Dick Tracy wrist, ra wrist TV radio from back yeah. in the day? Right? Well, here. It's a, as soon as they make the Apple Watch work, that's yeah. what we have. Right? It's the Dick Tracy TV wrist radio. Right? And, uh, and I think people are becoming much more comfortable with that. How many Skype? How many people use Skype? Right? Go to meeting? Oh, yeah. Right? So now, like, when I'm on a conference and we don't have video, I feel a little weird. Right? Because you get a cut. It's what you get used to. Right, uh, um, the co you know conference call was for a long time. You'd hear like all these people in the background, and then you know you wouldn't know. You know you'd hear noises. You wonder what are they doing, right? Well, now you can see what they're doing, right? But you also get you communicate more now face to face, right? And especially in our collective business, right? Face to face makes a big difference than just some voice over the phone, right? Um, so I think as as people are becoming more accustomed to that. I think that there are more opportunities for your organizations to take what people are used to, right? It's one thing just to hear it, but when you're able to see it, uh, when you're able to work face to face, when you're able to demonstrate what you do, like all the conferences for Alliance, uh, uh, we're able to broadcast that conference. So it's not just that audience that is in there during uh, during the events, like Innovation Conference, which we uh, we stream. We had that live on YouTube. I think it was an hour after the conference was done. Right, so not only could you watch it live, but now all the files are ready an hour. Like people weren't even back to their office, and like it was up on YouTube, right? And it's not that hard. Um, obviously, you just you just need to know what you're doing. But uh, uh, the message of today is um, video streaming is here. It's very prevalent in one form or another, and it's very advantageous. Uh, I, I think in uh, in our field of being able to continue to work with people. Right? Again, it's just a little bit of a barrier. And with a webcam and a, a decent internet connection, you can work with somebody face to face that perhaps you couldn't get to. Um, uh, I know in, in some of your, your areas, right, it's, it's very far away in between people, right? You know, what if you had the ability just to Skype and check in on people that were there that didn't see anybody else that day, right? You know, uh, you know could that make a difference? I, I think it, it, it could. Okay. The other types of things we're talking about, blogging, WordPress, Typepad, Tumblr, Blogger, movable type, I'm not sure what type is around. How many people use WordPress for their websites? 
Uh, How many people don't know if they do or not? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's take a moment here, guys. Right? So you're not sure what you're using for your website? Here, what's, uh, what screen are you on? All right, you're off to the side here. No, nope, doesn't look like you're using my WordPress. Okay. And you know how I know? Because there's a certain kind of implied structure to it. I would be surprised if that's WordPress. Uh, that looks more like a traditional like HTML coded page. It's a little more structure in WordPress. Though. But if you want to, if you want a WordPress site, I happen to know an agency that does great WordPress work. All right. Um, who's never heard of WordPress before? Anybody? Uh, has you ever heard? Who's not heard of WordPress? Okay. All right. Everybody WordPresses. Okay. So microblogging, I hate to just take Twitter, right? But it's for the most part, that's what Mike likes. It's a little bit of blog. 140 characters of pop. Tumblr, Yammer. Uh, anybody use Chatter, part of Salesforce? There you go. Yeah, uh, that's kind of like an internal version. <laughs> yeah, I did get in the back, yes. Uh, so these are, these are other little bits. It's kind of like uh, just, uh, you know like on Facebook where you just do a post, right? That's, uh, Facebook is, the uh, social is the Swiss Army knife of social media. Then Twitter is the toothpick that everybody loves. You know that little toothpick, right? The, one, the thing you always lose. I know. I love the toothpick. <laughs> All right. So that's what Twitter. That's my great analogy. So, Kevin, yes. So is texting like microblogging or blogging? Like, yes. Kevin, they couldn't hear that question online. Could you repeat it? Yeah, the question is, is texting microblogging? Uh, I guess technically you could say that it was, but I, I, because it's not conveyed through a, a, a social grouping, it's more one-to-one, -one, I probably wouldn't categorize it as microblogging. So could it be, though? I mean, there's yeah. you can do maps. Yeah, because you could do like a map, like a text to a, to a, a list. I, but yeah, I guess you could, you know, map. Maybe you just have to break. No, you know the the really the what we're talk, trying to talk about is more is how do you use these services versus how do you use these te that specific technology. Okay, I'm just thinking about folks who don't have access to that, especially when they're at home. Um, and so, technically, the universal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I can see how you can make an argument for that. And uh, hey, people uh, familiar with uh, like texting to a list. Right. Okay. So, uh, for those of you who aren't, right. So you have um, there's a number of different services that you can use that um, you can subscribe to a list, much like uh, uh, the old list service used to be back in the day. But you can do it from a phone that has texting on it, right. So, so for so for a phone that's not necessarily a smartphone or you don't have internet access, it's a way for you to still have a two-way communication. So somebody would type the uh, uh, text in, you know, send like five one three three to to a, to a number. And that adds them to your list. And now every time that you send a text out, everybody on your list gets that message. Right? And then I think depending on the service, they can text back or not. Right? And then there's different analytics that come around with it. Banks so, use the response text. You can, you can make transfers by text. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's programs where you can, you can respond to a conversation that way. Is there a specific service that, that you use that you could recommend? I'm happy to use that. I don't know. I use them as a user. Right. Personalized 
Um, so like in San Diego, it's personalized based on a whole variety of things. And I know a lot of the community clinics use it where they can actually enter appointments and they remind the moms of appointments and or immunization dates, but they also send out mass messages to say, you know, three vegetables or six, you know, that kind of stuff. So that would be the And so their platform, which I can actually connect you to, would probably be what you're looking for. Okay, great. That's helpful. You'll follow that up. Uh, we have an interest in that, too. We're working with middle schoolers to help them learn how. Kevin? Oh, I'm sorry. You just have to speak loudly in this yeah. room so the people on you stream can also hear you. Right? So if you're soft spoken, you gotta you just gotta project. So we're used to um, we're working with middle schoolers to help them um, in a health promotion kind of community health promotion class to help them design a text that as part of um, let's say an anti bullying campaign right. or an anti smoking campaign or a get your mom to have a mammogram, you know, like in, in the community campaigns in the neighborhood to learn, and I'd love to know how to, you know, what resources to use to help train them. Like once they design the text, how do they um, send that out? I've been in, mm -hmm. just very quickly in Fiji, I think I shared that in Fiji, when they needed to have everybody hand wash every three, because of a flu scare, every three hours, the entire country would get a text on your phone a little animated figure jumping up and down and washing its hands. <laughs> and it was the most powerful, effective messaging. I, so I think that we could learn from them. I would just add that the county itself has a good platform because the Ready San Diego that you can opt into if there's a disaster in San Diego um, is the same thing. So, um, you know, the resources are there. We just, you know, you just have to speak to your audience. The way that they're using those things. But I also want to caution when we're working with low income communities that, like, Text for Baby has an agreement that all texts are free because they have an agreement with all the carriers. And so I want to caution that we get into a text platform that people are being charged for us to give them a message about self sufficiency. Right. <laughs> and so we have to be careful <laughs> of how we're using the media and what the, what the user cost is. Very good point. All right. Our next, go, events. Uh, Evite, Meetup, Eventbrite, Facebook, LinkedIn doesn't do events anymore. Did anybody use anything else for events? Eventbrite is one that we use at uh, Alliance quite a bit. Uh, it's got nice registration functionality on it. And it also integrates, which is uh, uh, means that it will work with other social media sites and services as well. We've also used um, Stay Classy. Oh, right, yeah, I've seen well. Stay Classy. I haven't used it yet. You like it? Yeah, it's a great way to track and, and you know, sell tickets and other things as well. Bookmarking. Um, it just seemed like it got hot for a little while, and I think it gets unhot, but Delicious Dig, Reddit, BuzzFeed. Anybody use bookmarking? Right, to share, to share links that, uh, to different things on the internet? So you can make a list, um, speaking of lists, that says uh, uh, you know all of the medical uh, resources in Imperial County, and uh, if they've got a website, you know you go to the website and you add that link to the list. So then you share that list, and it just it, you're just maintaining a list. But now somebody doesn't have to go and look for it, uh, or they're not confused by the search results when they're trying to look for it. They just click on the link and they know that that's the one uh, to go and do it. So that's uh, that is one good use of uh, bookmarking. All right, widgets is a uh, Word that we like to use is kind of says that uh, a little plug-in functionality. Uh, add to any you may have seen on the bot uh, at the bottom of uh, web pages. They allow social sharing, right? It's a, it's another way to extend. You have like that, poll daddy, all-in-one SEO, but they're they're things that do very specific little finite things. Uh, miscellaneous. As much as it seems like it's a uh, kind of a uh, getaway category, it isn't. It's, it's things that really haven't kind of been categorized yet. Um, clout is one of them that I, anybody use clout or has seen clout? All right. So clout, um, do you ever wonder like how good you're doing on social media? You know, you're feeling pretty good, you know, your profile's looking pretty good, uh, and you go, I have 123 friends, and you know. Uh, well clout uh, is supposed to be this objective algorithm that shows you how you compare in the world of social media. It kind of says, it gives you a little bit of how am I doing? And it gives you some arbitrary score. 
Um, so that's something that's not like in anything else yet. So that's kind of why we got a category for miscellaneous. It just it really hasn't kind of fell into anything else yet, right? And then all of this, of course, is coming down to mobile, right? How many iPhone people here? Anybody get the new ones yet? No. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> well, you need it still works too. BlackBerry just got sold, Android, Galaxy, HTC, right? All of this. So all of these categories that we looked at, that is social media. Social media is a, is much more than Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, and people start kind of forgetting after there. There's a lot of different opportunities. So when I so when we, we look at um, how can we use social media, which is a lot. Yes. Where do services like Hootsuite fit in? Um, I don't really consider Hootsuite social media because it's a uh, it's an automation tool, right? It's not. Uh, there, people don't go to Hootsuite and it connected Hootsuite profiles, right? So that like TweetDeck, right? Those are all different applications that I think facilitate your social media, but I really wouldn't categorize it as that, right? Um, so all of this comes down into your palm now because your computer wasn't busy enough. Now it follows you everywhere all the time, right? This is social media. This is a sample of social media. There's so there are hundreds and hundreds of sites. So um, so how do you how do you make any sense of this, right? Um, who thinks that they're doing a great job on social media? And I'm not setting you up. I'm just looking for confidence levels at this point. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're, we're doing better you than do, we ever good. have. Uh, you're right. <laughs> who, well, who's exactly scared to that. death of social media? Somebody else kind of in the middle? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like to get into so, so this is what it is. right? What are the challenges that you're having with your social media? Staff time. Staff time. Right. Right, that, that, that they don't have enough time or they're taking too much time. <laughs> they don't have enough time. We all wear 14 hats. Mm -hmm. yeah, our back. biggest challenge is we'll set up a system, but having regular like staff or mm -hmm. somebody who has your ongoing responsibility to send out the tweets and to work, you know, to do the activities of the social media. We're able to set up the plan and the strategy, but to actually do it right. takes time. Anyone else? I think the return on investment is really hard to measure. Yeah, it seems like you're doing all this stuff and you're wondering why. You know, especially when it seems like it takes an awful lot of staff time. Because you got to keep it fresh. You have to keep it fresh, right? Because it's uh, it's very very cyclical, right? Um, I had uh, I'm going to share with you a video uh, here in a moment, Peter. If we can switch the audio over to my computer, uh, please. I'm going to share a video with you that is uh, an excerpt of my book. Uh, my book is called 20 Years Communications, 20 Leaders, 20 Questions, of Lessons. Um, the book um, was, uh, the, the whole project was started on the anniversary of my agency's 20th anniversary. Um, uh, I was reflecting back on 20 years being in the communications business. And uh, uh, as the story goes, um, there's, so, so there, amongst friends, so I'm at the bar with a bunch of my friends who've been in the business who started the same time as I did. Right, so over a couple of drinks, we start thinking, man, you remember when we were in the South Side? We didn't know what the hell we were doing. And you know, and some friends had gone the path of, they, they, uh, they were true art, continued find the painting and sculptor. Uh, I started my own shop, some of my other friends went to an agency uh, and did the corporate structure thing. Right, and like 20 years later, we're sitting in the bar like, so how'd that work out for you? Right, and, it, and, and there was just all these experiences and there's all these lessons. So uh, uh, I kept listening to lessons and I was thinking, oh, man, somebody should write all this down. So I did, and I turned it into a book, but also had the book uh, be part of a video series. So I'm gonna show you one of the 20 videos that's in the series, uh, and it is 19 other professionals, so 20 of us who have been in the business for 20 years or more, uh, that have done something in our careers, um, sharing our perspectives on different aspects of communication. And I'd like to share with you um, what my colleagues think the biggest challenges in social media are, because you are not alone. Okay.
So if I put it on the other, yeah, it's like the uh -huh. dance track. There's like six different versions. Uh -huh. On this version, we give you glow sticks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> challenge in social media is return on investment. It's all about ROI and uh, you know while you can measure social media that's still the uh, the unknown. How is it defined? You know, how's it has there what's the result back from it if the client gets involved in it? What are they getting out of it? Are they gonna spend some money to get into it and, and, and develop it and but when it comes to the end of a month or a quarter, uh, how is it defined for them? What they what kind of results do they see? We've talked about this in the sense of fatigue. I would say the biggest challenge for social media, any new platform that comes up, is the wow factor. Um, it's it's great, it's the new thing, and then I think there's a sense of um, where'd that go? To keep the noise down, to, to, to actually have it be fun, flexible, uh, enlightening, but not stupid. <laughs> noise. The social media in in its infancy, uh, was successful because it was it was one to one. It was people. Now it's companies, and now companies are invading this space. And everybody tunes out after a while. There's just too much noise, right? So um, what was once a fad, uh, in its honest truth, it's happened in other mediums. It's going to happen to social media. Social media is kind of the perfect storm of all the communications that we've been doing uh, over the last over many hundreds of years, right? I think advertising, copy, headlines, taglines, call to actions. A lot of people want to treat it as um, social media is Facebook, social media is YouTube. Those are some platforms and some pieces of it, um, and if you focus on those too many, you're not going to really engage in the conversations that are being had about your brand. And that's what the social media is, not the technology platforms that it's on. If you're using it for a marketing standpoint, you know, big next we're talking about, um, you know, uh, how do you keep a presence in front of uh, people that might be following you or interacting with you, and and not talk about what you have to interest? Because at some point you kind of run out of things to say. You book and Facebook, I get them so confused. I never look at them. Why do I want to look at somebody's picture that I didn't take or they aren't? in a provocative position. I don't care. You know, they send you, I'm in line at the Starbucks stop. I buy a coffee. So what? Social media is, um, I kind of look at it as, it's the, it's the act of allowing people, regular people, to talk and communicate about your brand. Now, there are many places they're going to do that, and many ways that they're going to do that, but you have to kind of naturally follow them and their rhythm understanding how your target markets currently interface with it and how that will continue to grow and proliferate. The big challenge in social media is probably you know, prioritization. I myself am a LinkedIn user. Um, I don't use Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn serves my purposes very well. Uh, I'm sure there are uh, a lot of, uh, I fit into a lot of customer segments where they'd like to try and reach me by social media. Um, but the degree to which you embrace it is probably uh, makes it a little challenging for where you put your emphasis and I think that's probably the, the biggest challenge. It's pretty incredible I mean yeah just watching you know even like you said like going through YouTube but you know my kids I mean that's the first place they go I mean it was like you know to like find out about anything it's like it took me a while to figure out oh yeah figure out how to make a cake on YouTube but like you know, at first like you know you don't think of it that way like oh like someone's gonna post a video that actually has some content to it. I think that's the age barrier it's like I'm totally used to having people send me emails and I don't check Facebook we have a Facebook account only because it's you're supposed to have it I guess but I don't check that all the time and then when I see people write about Farmville and all that other stuff I, I totally lose interest in it just trying to keep up with it uh, social media is is a real conundrum for a, for a lot of folks I don't know frankly how much money to invest in it how much time to put into it because uh, I know traditional media what the 
results are. I still don't really understand what could be accomplished there. And it's all moving so fast, it's just hard to keep up with. I think the biggest challenge in the media is that people haven't figured out how to use it uh, for the sake of marketing or advertising or, or communications in general. Um, social media is a very large uh, mass medium. There's a lot of people using it. But it's not very specialized in any way. Being able to integrate it within the entire media plan. I think understanding what works and what doesn't work and where you stand within it. I mean, it's, it's certainly there. People are active with it. How you can apply it to business is, is, is difficult to understand. You need an expert to be able to help you with that. There's no way to figure that out yourself. You need somebody who's in that field deep into it. Uh, it's tricky. It's tricky, but it's there and it should be taken advantage of in some way. I think the challenge in social media is trying to figure out how to use it for business. Uh, there are businesses that are experimenting, that have been experimenting. We, we experiment for our clients in social media. Um, but I also think that there is uh, uh, there's a huge opportunity in social media. How is it relevant? How can it be relevant for a broad swath of corporate clients? I understand how it's relevant you know, in other, other scenarios, but how is it relevant to a Fortune 500 company? Social media is interesting because people want to treat it like a discipline. They want to treat it as something, it, just like I talked about. It's not an ad, it's not a, t, you know, a TV ad or a radio ad. They want to make it a something. It's the whole e-commerce part of it. And knowing how to, when you find a follower, how to turn that into a conversion point or turn that into um, a benefit, a sale. Look, at 47 years old, I have young people teaching me this right now. And I think it's going to be it's the way of the future, and I think we need to, to deal with it. But we need to know what else is out there. I use Google Wave as an example. Um, it, uh, it seemed like it was going to be uh, the next big thing, and then I don't know if it's on hiatus or it just didn't work the bugs out, but it, uh, it seems to be something that's... Um, I think so. any social media channel is going to have to deal with some of that fatigue factor from folks like us and even uh, the people out in the, the world that are using it. So you are not alone. There's a lot of people that have a lot of questions. And uh, is, there, is there any, uh, what in this did you respond to? Right? Is it that, that you're having those same problems or, you know, well, one of the things uh, I think a lot of us responded to is the guy was talking about, you know, you're showing me your coffee cup. And yeah, Jack. Well, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's like, it, it, and it, to his point, why do I care? Yeah. Right, and that's a lot of that's a lot of things that we see um, from uh, on social media. It's a lot of things that aren't relevant to the audience. Um, that it just so why is it there? Right? And I think it adds to what um, Mike Lee would say is about the noise, mm -hmm. that there's so much of it out there. But one of the things that I think we can do is be selective in the social media <clears throat> that we have, to be purposeful with that social media, and make sure if we're going to share some things out there, that we're sharing it for a reason. It's, it, it's, uh, it's something that they need to know, something that we need to tell them. Uh, uh, is, is there anything else that anybody uh, pulled from Gretchen? Well, I want to say, uh I agree. I have a couple of friends who like to share everything they eat, and so we're, 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 we're you know pictures of food, and 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 you're weeding through that to get to more meaty conversations. So we're we're celebrating the trivial so much with with social media that it's, that yeah it creates a lot of noise. Kevin. Yes. Yeah. I was you know how to what the different. Can you use the mic there, Ahmed? Because it's really, you're really quiet. Yeah. Try to speak up. Yeah. yeah, how, you know, like, how you prioritize, you know, which one that's more effective. And, and now you can't use all of them. You don't have the map out, but which one that's really 